Hello, everyone. I have some things to talk about right now. The Aturian and the Dakshinayana, the, the northern six months of the sun moving north and the days getting longer from the winter solstice, December 25th or so to June 22nd or so, that six month period is said to be the Aturiana and it's when the sun is moving north and the days are getting longer. And then as the sun goes from the solstice point of the, you know, the June 23rd or whatever it is, it's not an exact same day every year because of the Gregorian calendar being so wacky. Um, it, the sun going south for six months, the day is getting shorter. That is called the Dakshinian. And those two things are, those are like the two, two ways to split up the year. And also, like uh, the Dakshinian, when the sun's moving south and the days are getting shorter, that's said to be when like the sun is going through the underworld. Um, and the Asuras are said to rule the underworld. And uh, like, mm, uh, like this, this, this quality or this idea that like Varuna uh, was a deity of the underworld and therefore the deity of the waters, you know, because the water symbolizes like hidden things beneath. Um, this is really interesting to me because I've just always found that I always get such a, there really is such an internalizing, introverting energy that comes upon us when we get to the point where we're past the autumn equinox, past September 22nd or so, and the sun's really starting to get further and further south, and the, the darkness is getting more and more uh, encroaching upon us. There is this energy, this, I, this feeling, this instinctual feeling of needing to turn within. Uh, you know, animals hibernate at this time of the year. Uh, the frogs and the tree frogs and the lizards and, and all the reptiles that are normally plentiful around where I live, so, so plentiful. They're kind of like everywhere. You, you reach your hand on a wall, you almost hit a lizard. They're all going and hibernating and being still at this time, unless the weather gets to be over 75. But for the most part, they're inert and they're hibernating. And I just, I'm reminded of the sign of Scorpio, you know, when I think about all of these things and Scorpio being the sign of that, that the sun goes through, at least if we're doing the tropical zodiac every year at the same time, Scorpio is like saying autumn and the season, this time when everything's turning within and dying to the external world. We find that the trees are turning brown and they're, you know, they're, taking their color out of their leaves. That's uh, what science has actually proven. That's what's happening when we see fall color. We're actually not seeing, aside from the red color, the red color is a synthesized thing that the plant makes. Aside from that, every other color you see of yellow and, and all the others, oranges and the blends of red and everything, those are actually just the chlorophyll, the green chemical being withdrawn from it. And it creates that color. And, uh, and Scorpio is the color brown. Scorpio is, the, at least when we look at Rashi's and try to say each Rashi is a certain color, brown is the color that I, I found to make the most sense for Scorpio, though there is some disagreement on that. And then the next sign after that is Sagittarius, and that is orange colored. And like when I was talking with uh, one of my teachers, Ernst, uh, a couple weeks ago at the Sedona Vedic Astrology Conference, or it wasn't at that, we were just driving around, but he was talking about how orange is the color of, of uh, like, energy leaving the body. And that's why, like, the, the trees turn that color. And we were looking at the beautiful, like, orange color of Sedona and commenting on that. And um, Swamis also wear orange, although some say that they used to, it used to be a brown color, and it slowly changed to orange. But either way, these are both colors that sort of symbolize this internalizing of energy and that's what we're doing you know to wake up spiritually we just do that enough and do it fully and we eventually wake up to what we really are which is beyond just this body and so we become incredibly happy because we're no longer bound just to this body and its constant needs and 
you know, I can only go even a few minutes without having to take a breath or do some sort of work or labor. So having a body can sometimes be a drag. <laughs> um, and during this time, it seems like that sort of energy of pulling within, pulling away from the body and just going in and meditating just always seemed to work really well for me. I remember when I got initiated into Kriya Yoga, uh, my the person that I learned from, well, I was first learned from uh, Ryan Kurzak, who many of you know because his astrology channel. He learned from Roy Eugene Davis, and so I went and learned from him as well. And Roy Eugene Davis is a direct disciple of uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, and you know Yogananda directly told him what to do. Um, Paramahansa Yogananda is this great yogi. Here's a picture of him, uh, and and so. I guess when Roy first met Yogananda, it was right around Christmas, and they had this long six-hour meditation that they would always do. And Roy was always in the tradition of having a holy season meditation at the beginning of December. And so I would go to that every time, and it would be this awesome three-hour meditation and go real deep. And uh, that sort of maybe set up the pattern for it. But I just always feel like the strong desire to go to, to go deep within myself and to contemplate things really deeply during this time of the year. Um, I think even a lot of college students and university professors I've talked to have been like, like when I lived in Asheville, uh, North Carolina, and was going to school there, my professors were like, yeah, you, know, you just get a lot of learning done during these snowy, you know, wintry days when you can't go outside. Um, and so we can translate that to our spiritual practices too, but also for your study of astrology, you can get a lot done during these colder, quieter, more still days. And yeah, it's just a different kind of energy from the this more restless energy of the peak of summertime that you that you might notice. Mm, like when the sun is in Gemini, a sign of restlessness. Um, opposite is now where we're at, sign of Sagittarius, uh, a sattvic sign, and there's the stillness out in the environment, and you can really pick up on it. So that's pretty cool. Um, I've got to do a reading actually in the next five minutes, so I've got to go, but I'll, I'll have to make this a part two of this video because I went a little long and I had a bunch of other things I wanted to say about <clears throat> the Turiana and the Dakshinayana. Um, and these are like kind of connect to the solstices and the seasons, and this is why the seasons are the way they are, and this is why nature is the way it is as a result, this is why life is the way it is as a result. So. We definitely could say a lot about these things, and I will say more about them um, when I get a chance. Yeah, I'll delete the rest for next one. Okay, bye you guys.